Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop on yesterday's episode, Calamity. The sword warped. Looks an awful lot like a hockey stick or a banana or a sword that's not straight. It looks more like a sword that's not straight. But on today's episode, we have to try and see if we can straighten it. So what we're gonna do is into the forge we go again and we have to do the entire heat treatment process again. I'm gonna heat it up, I'm gonna straighten it, normalize three times, and then we're gonna go back in the quench. Hopefully this works. Okay, so we've straightened it and we've done one normalizing cycle. It's now the next day. And so I'm having a look at this and it's still, it still, it, it didn't straighten. I haven't straightened it. It still looks very much like a banana. That, that's not good. Oh yes, that is a real problem. And you see, the issue is, is normalizing is obviously the process of removing the stresses from the piece of steel. So right now, I wanna try and give it a straighten because I think I should start somewhere, but that means that I defeat the purpose of normalizing. And when I take this and I stress it to the degree Agree that it yields and bends. Those stresses, when it heats up, yeah, they might well allow the thing to loosen up and walk, warp right back to where it was. So sadly, the straightening is best done hot. But I did that last time and it didn't really work so well. Because it came out of that normalizing cycle bent as a... Bent as a pretzel. Oh boy. Sometimes I do wish I knew what I was doing. A longer heat treating furnace would be super helpful. It's funny, I've been meaning to get myself an actual heat treating oven for at least a year and I've kept forgetting and I've kept putting it off. The trouble with heat treating in a forge is obviously it's, it's difficult to get a perfectly accurate temperature. However, with a heat treating oven that's you know electric or what have you, you can have a nice long oven that's the perfect temperature and just get the perfect heat without having to go back and forth, which is probably bending it. And of course, anytime there's just the slightest inconsistency in the heat, that can help then get you a warp in the quench. Now, I don't know if heat treating ovens, professional heat treating ovens even come long enough for this. So though a longer forge isn't necessary for the forging process of a sword, because I work only a little bit at a time and I don't want to oxidize the whole thing. As many of you have pointed out, probably could do for the heat treatment of these things with a longer forge or a dedicated heat treat oven. Okie dokie, let's try normalizing cycle number 3462. Okay, so I painted it through the forge, got it to the right heat, did a little straightening halfway through, pulled it out, just gave it the tiniest, tiniest little tweak, hung it up, boom, straight away, another bend. So I'm wondering if the way I'm hanging it up maybe is maybe causing it to bend or something. I mean, is it, it looks like it's hanging straight. Now it's got that, that banana going like this. And I figured if it's hanging straight, then it's not gonna bend, but it looks like it's bending. Difficult stuff. I'll tell you what's some good news though. Pattern coming through, looks beautiful. Okay, give it a straighten. No point putting it in the forge bent, I figure. Into the forge we go. Let's try and normalize it again. So I'm not really sure how well this is gonna work, but I think, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna go in for the heat treat now. Hopefully we can keep it straight. There is that little pocket of time where it can be straightened. I think the big problem yesterday is that when I put it in there, you know, great, pulled it out, use that pocket of time to try and straighten it, put it back in to finish the rest of the cooling, and I then just left it, and I lent it up against the edge here, and I wonder whether as that was then cooling the weight of the blade, as it was held at an angle in the quench tube, Maybe that caused it to bend. So what I'm gonna do this time, I'm not gonna let go. I'm gonna put it straight down. Hopefully, it'll go straight down. I'm gonna hold it halfway through the cooling process, pull it out, check it straight. And then as I do the finished cool, it's, I'm just gonna hold it, keep it straight. Hopefully, we can get ourselves a straight Scottish Claymore. Come on, here we go. Let's make it happen. 
Almost there. Almost ready. Got the magnet. This is too hot. That's the right temperature. I want it just where it's non-magnetic. Get a little more heat in the middle and a little more near the tag. I don't want to go too far above non-magnetic. Otherwise, you go too hot, it can still end up not hardening. Come on. There we go. Get a little more even heat in the middle. Almost there. Come on. Here we go. This one. This one. This one. Okay. Into the oil we go. Let's do it. Damn it. That's really bad. Don't let that happen, kids. Come on. Really hope this worked. Okay. I'm about to take it out and see if it's straight. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. That looks pretty good. Okay. I think we got it. I think we got it. Back into the oil we go. Hopefully, it won't bend like last time now. I think we've done it, ladies and gentlemen. I think we've done it. Oh, yeah. Got the Grey Martin sight on there. I bet this thing is hard as can be. <laughs> I think I've almost melted the tube. Oh, wow. Whoa. Ah! Yeah, I melted the tube. It's dripping. Oh, golly. I melted holes in that thing. Holy mackerel. What? Well, at least I know those burners will melt steel. The moment of truth. After I pulled it out of the quench, I thought, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I don't know if this will do anything, but I put it on the welding table. I laid a piece of steel on it, and I'm now gonna lift it up. We'll find out if it cracked, if it's really, really, you know, badly warped. Oh, let's have a look. First things first, this gray here. This is an indication of the martensite forming, which as far as I understand, is a wonderful indicator that we got the hard blade. It looks like there's a little tiny any bit of a bow in there. Turn it over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this has a slight bow going to the left. It doesn't look too terrible though. Uh, it's pretty bad. However, let's see if it's hard. Oh yeah. Hard as glass. The entire blade is completely hard. This is fantastic. It's also very dangerous because what it means is it's very brittle right now. And that bend, no way I can get that bend out now. In other news, guess who's got a nice cast steel floor in his forge? Yep, that's right. That's a great way to ruin the floor of your forge. Okay, so I don't really know the best way to progress from here. I also haven't got an exact idea of how I'm gonna temper this, but I figure as something needs to be done, I might as well start doing something. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grind this back to true material, being very careful not to break it. And then what I wanna try is something, I've gotta temper it somehow. So I'm gonna have to think about that while I grind. So what is my idea for how I'm gonna temper this? Well, I've got this big old piece of steel and I'm gonna make two cuts. two pieces of steel, cut them on the bandsaw, but then what I did is I went into the milling machine and I drilled some holes, and the holes were drilled in such a way that I had a larger diameter hole. And of course, I forgot to mention the two pieces were tack welded together, and I then drilled a larger diameter hole, a slightly smaller diameter hole, and then a smaller hole sized to the tap drill that I was gonna use. And this means I can use some of these bolts to be able to bolt everything together and keep the blade straight during tempering. 
Okay, so I've ground the outsides, and hopefully that helps me tell temperature a little bit. I have no clue if this is gonna work. This could be an absolute failure. I'm gonna lay the hardened sword onto this piece of steel. I'm gonna take a piece of wire, and I'm gonna put it underneath the tip. Take the next piece of steel and lay it on top. And so I can screw down the plates, and on the opposite side to the little piece of wire I put over there, I'm gonna put a little piece of wire here. And now it's time to button everything down. Oh my goodness, this is heavy. Ugh. At this stage, now that I see that there's this enormous block of steel and this tiny piece of, uh, and this tiny forge, I have no clue if this is gonna work, but I've got the heat turned way down low on the burners, running a very reducing flame. Obviously, you see the yellow at the back there. The temperature inside the steel box is extremely low. Um, it's not, however, low enough for the tempering. So the whole hope is, is that this box We'll just kind of keep it away from the flame itself to keep the temperature down low enough. Right now it's 163 degrees, 168 degrees Celsius. To keep the temperature low enough that we can heat up this entire mass of steel to 200, maybe 220 degrees Celsius without overheating the blade. And this should keep it all straight while we heat it up for the tempering. And though I've never tried it before, hopefully those bits of wire with the clamping is gonna help actually straighten it from the warp that it had. Okay, so I'm starting to get a light straw here on the thick steel. My hope is, is that the thick steel is acting as enough of a heat sink to stop the blade from getting any hotter. It's looking like the perfect temperature on the thick steel, right about here. I'm gonna let the heat come up to the back side of it, and hopefully this will have worked, and we'll get a good temper on the blade. Not too hot, and not too cold. Okay, got a straw up here too. Straw, straw, straw. It uh, should be interesting to see if this has had any effect on the straightening. What I mean by that is, the tempering with it uh, locked up in this. Boy, that's heavy. Okay, I'll just set that there and uh, let it cool down. We'll pull it out, we'll see if it's straight and we'll see what the temper colors on the blade look like. Ugly ugly, it's cooled down now. Let's open her up and see how, uh, see how bent or how straight it is. It's actually still pretty hot. Hey, that's not as bad as it could be. Hey, I, that might grind out. Very light straw temper color. I'm not super thrilled about the amount of temper. Here, that looks about right. Here, it looks about right. It's a little light there. So there's not quite, doesn't quite look like it got hot enough about here. So one thing that I was planning to do was to increase the temperature here at the tang with a torch because that needs to be done to make sure it's extra flexible. But I'm also gonna use that opportunity to get a little more heat into this midsection. My worry is, is that if I put heat on one side more than the other, I could warp it, so I'm gonna have to be very gentle as I heat that midsection to make sure that I do even heat on both sides and don't end up making it even, even crazier. But uh, I'm gonna start off down here at the tang, get that, uh, get that past a blue temper. That way it's gonna be plenty flexible, plenty of give, a little less, uh, a little less brittle. So while that's been cooling down, I uh, swept the floor, cleaned up the workshop a little bit. Always nice to do that. I'm about to mop it because I spill oil when I heat treat it. So I want to just try, try and make everything clean. But of course, sweeping the floor, picked up all the scale that was made in the forging process of the Damascus. And so in case you're interested, just how much scale is made when you make a Damascus steel Scottish claymore. That's seven pounds and one ounce of iron oxide. Oh, and a uh, plastic watch more, what's it? I started mopping the floor and I was just gonna mop the forging area, but I ended up mopping the whole area, so there we go. I got carried away with that, and this is now cooled down. You can see it's got a nice even straw the whole way along, and I tempered back that tang transition to a nice blue purple, so that'll give it a nice amount of flexibility. The blade still has a slight wiggle, especially in the edge, but with the edge still being about an eighth of an inch thick, I'm hoping that we can grind most of it out. So I'm gonna be very excited to keep 
keep working on this tomorrow. I guess this thing is going to be finished ground, which is going to be very exciting. As you know, Christmas is less than a month away, which is extremely exciting, and it means that I can soon start singing Christmas songs. Ha <laughs> ha! Which is fantastic, because I love me a good Christmas song, and even better, I've got some awesome Christmas t-shirts. Look at these blacksmith-themed Christmas t-shirts. Yeah, that's right. Blacksmiths get coal in their stockings, and we love it. We love coal. We love coal in our stockings. So make sure you get that t-shirt, and make sure, of course, this festive, oh my goodness, it's so festive and Christmassy. These two shirts are absolutely awesome. They're up on the website now, and as a little treat for the next 48 hours only, we're gonna be doing free shipping on the Christmas shirts, so make sure you get one so you can celebrate Christmas in style with the free shipping. Get your merchandise nice and far so you can be as festive as possible while still making sure that you tell everybody that you, you love blacksmithing because it's so much fun. I will see you tomorrow on the next episode. It's going to be a blast. Lots of hard work to go. Lots of, uh, lots of learning to do. So uh, make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you then. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one horse open. Slay. Oh, I'm dropping stuff here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh no.